Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Healthcare. Heart disease is the number one killer of both men and women in this country. Local doctors are finding that the Hmong population in our community is at a growing risk for heart disease. We're very pleased to have with us Dr. Fung Lo. He's a physician with the Healthies Roseville Clinic and um, among your patients and some of them are Hmong population as well. So. Um, Dr. Lo, maybe thanks again for being with us. We really appreciate you taking time to be with us today to talk about this important issue. Um, maybe we could start first by talking about the Hmong population. Tell us a little bit about the Hmong people and who they are. Yes. Um, well, thank you for inviting me. I, I'm, I'm so thrilled to be here today. Uh, Hmong are in your midst, if you could see it, in the east side area. Uh, it's heavily populated by Hmong. You'll see it in, their, you'll see it in the, the mall at your hospital. Uh, we're part of that, I, I would say large, but for Hmong that would be large. During the, after the Vietnam War, uh, we immigrated to this country. And right in, in the Twin City area here, uh, the number, I, I think that the, the latest census is is a couple of years back, it's close to 60,000 Hmong patients that are living in Twin City area, Twin City area alone. Uh, we're like the largest minority, and... And since coming to America, we're seeing some diseases perhaps that didn't exist or they you didn't see in former um, in, in Laos area there, so, and one of them is heart disease. What are you seeing, first of all, at your clinic among yes. some of the patients? Well, back in Laos, uh, we don't have a hospital like we do here. A lot of the diseases, whether it be heart disease or whether it be a stroke or a kidney disease, we don't have a name for it. But when we arrived to this country, we found out that a large percent of our people uh, have become ill, and the primary uh, diseases is heart disease. Uh, most of uh, the Hmong, they, I, I would say that, you know, heart disease may be the top three killer that, I, that, that we see in our community. And do we have any idea why we're seeing that? I, I would venture to say that uh, it's because of uh, the, the food, uh, lifestyle, uh, because back in Laos, most of the people are, are farmers, and they spent most of their time out in the field, and the, the food that they eat are a small portion, high nutrition uh, content, mostly a vegetable, very little protein, very little fat, hardly sugar, and very little, little sodium. And when we arrived, you know, our main staple of food back in Laos is vegetables and rice. But we found ourselves in this country with a a large amount of protein, fat, sugar, and sodium. And I think that that may have uh, contributed to the high number of heart disease that I see in our community. And I would think uh, some of the contributing factors would also be an increase in diabetes, which heart disease is, um, diabetes is one of the number of causes of heart disease as well, Oh, yes. Right? Uh, many of my patients uh, have diabetes as well as cholesterol uh, problems, as well as high blood pressure problems. And as we well know, these are all risk factors for heart disease. So what would be some of the symptoms of heart disease? Um, are our patients aware of what those symptoms even are? You know, a lot of, I would say that a large a portion of the Hmong population are not aware of what heart disease is. And there's many reasons to explain why that's the case. There's cultural for one. Culture for one. Two, it just, like I said before, lack of information. 
uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done at my level, being a primary care physician, so to educate my patient. But most of them, if they don't feel right, they often find themselves at my clinic or at your hospital in, in the emergency department or call 911. And there's a lot of groundwork that we have tried very hard at, at uh, our clinic trying to educate our people about heart disease. I understand too, I've talked to some cardiologists that were saying that not only are they seeing an increase of heart disease among the Hmong, but they're also finding that it's more advanced and, and, and often more times more fatal than it is in the general population. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with that consensus with the cardiologist. It's not only the older folks who has risk factors, but oftentimes we have uh, young men, uh, younger than me, that have you know severe vessel disease and involved oftentimes three or four requiring open heart surgery wow so uh, this 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 when i when i hear about story like this it's it's very alarming to me and uh, now our younger children you know we're looking at uh, them having more food I'm, I'm talking about you know the high sugar and more diabetes and even more at diabetes. a younger age yeah Wow, very and, and these carries, you know, significant risk factors like, like I said before. So um, what would be those symptoms that they should be aware of when they're having certain symptoms? When should they go see you at the clinic? When should they go to the hospital? Yes. Yeah, symptoms of heart disease is oftentimes, you know, described as a, a chest discomfort. Uh, but what's, what's more worrisome to a clinician to, or to a patient, ought to be a chest pain associated with exertion. Oftentimes, radiates to the to your neck area or to your left arm. But if you should have risk factors, and if you're having symptoms of chest pain, it's a good time for you to call your doctor and schedule an appointment, just to make sure that you don't have heart disease. And anything that um, you advise your patients on what they can do to reduce their risk or to prevent heart disease. Yes, I, I, I wholeheartedly support a yearly exam. And if you have risk factors like diabetes, uh, cholesterol problems, high blood pressure or kidney disease, I strongly recommend that you follow with your physician regularly. Because heart disease is, is oftentimes are not detected. And if, if, if you should be unlucky, that may be your last time to experience symptoms like that. It must be frustrating for you as a physician to know that it's a growing threat out there to a certain population like this and even younger and younger people being affected by it. Oh, yes. I, it, it is very, very frustrating. Uh, people oftentimes don't think that they, the very thing that they, the easiest thing to do is to, to watch their diet, pay attention to, to their, their body size and habitus, participate in aerobic activity, or try to lose weight. Because these are the easiest impact that you can contribute to your health. And outside of that, if you, if you do have the symptoms or disease, then you can schedule an appointment with your clinicians. Any other advice that you'd be giving our viewers, um, in particular, our Hmong viewers that might be watching? Yes. Uh, if you're Hmong and watching, I, I, I would want you to schedule an appointment with your uh, clinician for a complete physical. Uh, I really do think that heart disease uh, does take time to progress. And if we catch it early, we, we could at least help to prevent some of the symptoms or maybe altogether uh, an acute coronary syndrome that will threaten your life. And is this something that you could say in Hmong to our viewers that might be watching as well? Oh, yes. So, if you have a lot of people who are not going to be able to a ya de chi mu jua de gu ma yu mo tamang ka yu wa chi mo zha xie 
ยอยะมอนิโนเนยจุตอจัวเจ้าจุมอเนยจุตอ่าไปอุลิเมดิกาเฮไปชินิรุเจกะตะฟูยอเตเนอีญวนญาจอลอลอยะนิเจปอนเ
you know, Jody, you are at risk for having um, heart disease. Your risk is 10% in five years that you would have a heart attack or 30%. If people want to do additional services, they certainly can. And we do um, calcium scoring, which is a CT scan. Um, and that looks at calcium buildup in the coronary arteries. Um, we also do a VO2 max with um, a test with Dr. Roncari. So it's the treadmill test with the mask. A lot oh, of people are that. familiar with that. <laughs> yeah. And an EKG on. And so Dr. Roncari with the nutrition and fitness specialist would be looking at the screen as you're on the treadmill, determining whether there um, are any risk factors that you might have heart disease. So it's a really great way for people to get more information about themselves. One thing that people do like um, that have gone through the program is they get to sit down with a cardiologist and have a conversation, just like we're having right now. So it's not a, a quick um, visit in with the doctor. It's just more about having a conversation about prevention instead of talking about symptoms and illness and um, traditional sick care. Yeah, I mean, what you were saying at the very beginning is that tr traditionally, the first time you see a cardiologist is after you've had a heart attack. And that's when yeah. you find out you have heart disease. or Sometimes it's too late. The right. first time you know you have heart disease, is, it could be fatal. And traditionally what happens too is then you go into a cardiac rehab program where you look at nutrition and fitness. And with this, we're looking at doing that ahead of time. So if, you, if you're noticing that, wow, every time I go into the doctor, my weight's creeping up and my cholesterol seems to be climbing and now I'm on Lipitor and I've just added in a high blood pressure medication, it's really time to, you know, take some focus on yourself and lose some weight, start eating healthier. It's all the things that Dr. Lowe just talked about. Very simple things that you can do. It doesn't have to be complicated. But um, with our cardiac wellness program, what we're doing is we're integrating lifestyle changes with the cardiologist to prevent heart disease. You were telling me before we started that this is one of the only programs of its kind here in the Twin Cities in Minnesota? Right, and we, we really felt strongly that it's so important because heart disease is largely preventable, most of the risk factors are preventable, that we do something to prevent it instead of just waiting to get sick. So once you do one of these programs, whether it's just the first diagnostic one or you do something further, so then how do you prevent it? You're saying you make these lifestyle changes, but what do you, how does someone, once they say, okay, you're at risk for it, then what happens? So what we do, um, after meeting with Dr. Roncari, there's several different options that people can do based on um, their financial, uh, what they want to pay for a program. So they can do as much or as little as they want. But always you're going to meet with a health and wellness coach, which is about sitting down and discussing with you, okay, here's your risk factors. What do you want to do about it? Where are you most ready and willing to start? Everybody's going to be different. We just can't tell someone, you need to lose weight, you need to eat healthier and move. Someone, it's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. So mm -hmm. we really need to motivate people, and that's what that missing link is, is how do we motivate people to do this? Because we all know we need to do it, but why aren't we? So... From there, it's going to depend on you what you're going to do to prevent heart disease. Many people might have a goal of, I want to reduce my blood pressure and get off my blood pressure medication. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to start eating more fruits and vegetables, start doing 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise three times a week. Um, and then we just move on from there. Maybe some people want to reduce their stress. Um, maybe some people want to go from drinking 14 cups of coffee down to two cups of coffee a day. It's, um, it's really individualized and customized. And I think what we had mentioned earlier with Dr. Lowe too on the diabetes is also another risk factor for increased risk factor for heart disease. So mm -hmm. I know that some people when they've lost some weight, suddenly they don't have to take the medication or even insulin in that in some instances. Right, a lot of times when people do lose weight, they start exercising just a modest weight loss to 10% can reduce your blood pressure to a normal level, um, reduce your blood sugar so that it's within the normal range. So those are all really positive things that are just done through lifestyle. And to think about not taking a medication, that's what a lot of our clients want to do. Their goal is, I don't want to take Lipitor. I don't want to take um, high blood pressure medication. And about the ways to wellness, um, some of the programs that you offer, they're so tailored toward the individual why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about those different programs that someone, if they're diagnosed, if they go through the cardiac wellness mm -hmm. program, they say you're at risk, mm -hmm. what would be some of the options that they could do? So some of the things that we offer at Ways to Wellness is we offer personal training, we have Pilates Reformer, we um, have nutrition consultations, health and wellness coaching. 
within the cardiac wellness program, we have four different programs to choose from that have bits and pieces of all these. So it's really customized. And we call those programs Getting Started. Then we have the Selby program, which is a little bit more. It includes a membership at our facility and also 12, 24 7 fitness center. Um, and also 12 30 minute visits with whatever professional you want to see outside of the cardiologist. And then as you ramp up to the next program, the grand, it includes a little bit more, and then up to the summit program, which includes a little bit of everything. So you're going to get the calcium score, the CT calcium score, um, the VO2 max testing, and everything. So wh why did um, Waste Wellness and the cardiologist decide to have this program, offer this program? We really just, we thought, we, this is something we need to be doing healthcare. Um, we really need to change the focus from sick care to well care. So it needs to be about prevention. And what better way to do it than to team up with the two experts in their area and integrate it into one. So that was really the reason. And the risk factors are largely preventable. Unlike once you have a heart, a heart, heart attack and you have um, rehab and stuff, is there, does insurance cover any of this at all? Unfortunately, right now, insurance doesn't cover it. Um, the way that our healthcare system works, this is not something that um, hopefully it will in the future. So right now, we're look we are documenting everything that we're doing, researching our outcomes, and so hopefully with having outcomes, we'll be able to get some of these services covered through health insurance. If um, someone is interested in learning more about the cardiac wellness program or about ways to wellness, how do they go about doing that? They can visit our webpage um, at www.healtheast.org slash ways to wellness and click on the cardiac wellness program on the left hand side of the page. They can also call at 232-1926 and we can give them more information that way. We always offer free 30 minute consultations. Um, and then for our viewers watching today, you had said that you're also offering them a special Yeah, discount. we're also offering for the month of February 10% off all of our cardiac wellness packages. So you can have a free 30-minute consult and then 10% off any cardiac wellness package. So if they say that they heard about it here on yes. Inside Healthcare, mm -hmm. you'll give that honor, that discount. Final comments for our viewers on preventing heart disease, number one killer of both men and women? I think it is really important for our um, communities to come together and think about how important it is to prevent heart disease, that the risk factors, diabetes, um, being overweight, having high cholesterol, having high blood pressure, being inactive, all of those things are within your reach to change. Brenda. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Glad you could be back, and especially during Heart Month to mm -hmm. talk about this really cool brand new program. So thank you so much. Thank you. And Brenda Navin with um, Health East and the Director of Wellness and Health. So thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone. Thank you. Inside Healthcare. For more information, visit stjohnshospital-mn.org or call 651-326-7800.